All right, everybody, happy Monday. Thank you for joining us today. We are going to discuss a topic, and this topic we all know, uh, I think we're all too familiar with, is stress. Uh, uh, um, and and there's, there's a certain amount of stress that is healthy, right? But the problem is uh, with our society and how we're living, we are overly stressed. And this has such negative side effects to our body. A lot of times we don't really understand like what is going on with our body and that it's actually a result from stress. So we end up doing a, maybe like a band-aid approach to certain symptoms that we're having without really addressing what the root cause is. What is the problem here? And a lot of times all arrows point back to stress. So we're going to kind of cover the pro um, stress in detail and finish up with ways to take supplements that can help with stress as well as lifestyle modifications. Yeah, and awesome for you guys to chime in and send us some comments on what works well for you. Cause guys, it's all about what works for you individually and figure this out over time. But Lisa, I think we should do a quick, <laughs> quick <laughs> overview or discussion on what cortisol is. People probably have heard of cortisol. They consider it the stress hormone. Um, I just wanted to talk about that very quickly, but you're right. The problem with stress is when it's super physiological levels, right? When it's too high, too much for too long. And that's what we're going to sort of talk about today. But real quick, just to, in a, to, to illustrate how cortisol works to, in our benefit, to our favor, and also how it can be a bad thing. I'm just going to be a quick example. This is probably not a good one. But either way. Slow down. Here it goes. I would say he talks so fast. So imagine, imagine a scenario where we're pressed for time. We've got a schedule to keep. And we've got a busy house. You have kids, you have a Zoom, you have whatever going on, and you got to get out the door, and your daughter needs to get to volleyball practice, and you're racing down the road, and you're driving, and you're like, oh my gosh, I got a window here, and you just step on it, you're going 60 and a 45, the red light flashes, you blast through that red light, that's your adrenaline, right, that's that's your epinephrine and norepinephrine, we know, we've heard of adrenaline, that's your adrenaline rush, your heart rate's up, you're racing, like, all oh, right, man, I smoked that red light, I'm good, and then what happens is your cortisol kicks right in behind it and says, "Ooh, maybe you're not so good. What happens if we get pulled over? We just, we, we, what, what's our excuse going to be? What do we need to tell the cop? What, what just happened? Like how you're trying to put a common sense into an uncommon scenario. Whereas the fight or flight response is get through that light. I got to get to this volleyball practice and drop my kid off on time. She's always late. It's going to be a problem. Whereas right, cortisol, Cortisol is trying to help bring in sort of that common sense of like, how do we, how do we manage it? Say, all right, well, we're not getting pulled over. Okay, cool. Then you're like, all right, well, what if, when we get to practice, what are we going to tell the coach? All right. And you tell, you know, your, your kid's in the car. And then you're thinking, wait a minute, I just blew a red light at 60 miles an hour. What if somebody was crossing the road? What if there was a biker? What? I have got a kid, kid in the car. What if, what just, what if? And the cortisol says, Next time I'm going to leave the house 10 minutes earlier. I'm not going to let somebody distract me. I'm not going to sit and scroll social media. I'm just not going to get stuck in the digital stressful world. That is what all those factors contributed to. So next time you're totally on time. You're very, very, very rarely ever late. And you're cool with that. That's your, the system worked. The system did its job. But what happens when you're showing up that late and you're all like to work every time. Now you got warning after warning after warning and your body's doing the same thing. You're racing, you're beating that red light and your cortisol is just so persistently elevated. And it's just not going down. And that whole time that your cortisol is elevated, your blood glucose is through the roof, right? Your reproductive system, not that you would need it in that scenario, but is shut off. Your growth hormone system is, is shut off. And so biochemically, a lot is actually going on because cortisol is a very, very important hormone. And I don't know if, what you plan to talk about today, but for me, I always kind of back this conversation in the hormone, dysregulation, imbalance, whatever you want to call it. But I do want to focus on hormones. And I that example may or may not help you guys, but cortisol just does that. It, it, it's there. It's important, but we need to learn to recognize it and let it be heard. Let's let's pay attention to our cortisol. Right, and cortisol being the you know the stress hormone, that is what really causes all these negative things to happen in our body. So that's why Ryan really started with that and wants to like. Uh, you know, hit that hard. Um, you know, a lot of times cortisol also causes an increase in belly fat. So we think, oh my gosh, I'm gaining weight, but it's all right here. This yeah. must be this age. I don't know. Do I need to diet more? And then you get on this chronic diet and then your body's more stressed out. And then your cortisol goes way higher and the, the cycle just continues. Oh yeah, It's a very nasty, vicious cycle. So being, it's all about being okay. balanced and it's mm -hmm. not easy, like much easier said than done. Trust me. Oh yeah. We get it. <laughs> we get it. And a lot of it's just, it's an evolutionary trait, but now we're living in this super stressful digital world. It's a little different, uh, but the feedback loop is complicated. Uh, it does work 
the way cortisol works is done on feedback. And a lot of it has to do with how long is that cortisol hanging on the receptor? You know, and that there, there's biochemically, there's a lot going on there. So she's right though, it drives insulin resistance and talk about a nasty cycle. Lisa. we'll talk about sleep a little bit, but imagine where cortisol increases stress and inc increases anxiety. You then lessen or have trouble sleeping because your cortisol levels are elevated as you sleep, which by the way, they usually are elevated first thing upon waking. But imagine that where they're elevated, you're not sleeping as well, you don't get as much sleep. Therefore, your melatonin is suppressed. You wake up, you're still stressed, you're anxious again, your cortisol keeps going up. There, there in lies this, the relationship is between stress and sleep for the most part. So you talked about cycle. It can be a very, very wicked cycle. Yes, and you also mentioned about the blood sugar. We don't yeah. realize really what cortisol can, can do to them, what stress does to our blood sugar. Right. Um, I actually had an affiliate reach out to me saying like, I li basically laying out their lifestyle of how everything is so healthy and balanced and their supplement routine, their diet, their everything. But all of a sudden out of nowhere, they're diabetic. They were just told that they just crossed over the line. And she's like, I don't understand. But like my stress level is out of control. That's the only thing that I don't have control over. And I said, bingo. And I sent her this article about this study it's all about insulin resistance, stress induced insulin resistance. It's a thing. So we have to be aware Absolutely. when we're trying to work on everything being in balance, we right. have to put attention to our stress level. Right. And unfortunately, it's a little bit harder to do. So that's one of the, I, I mean, I feel like it is. So that's something that maybe put on the back burner. Like I'll take care of this because it's easier to take care of this situation. Or maybe I can clean up my diet a little better and help my blood sugar. But if the diet's not really the problem, if it's the stress, we're not addressing that, I guess, elephant in the room. Yeah. You know, it, it's not going to help anything. And this is a full disclosure. Obviously we're not behavioral psych. Psycho, we're not psychotherapists. We Sometimes don't. I like to think I am. <laughs> but with stress, there could be trauma. There could be other things that are at play. So I, we we are big big believers in psychotherapy and having somebody to speak to uh, reliably and that you can turn to. So that, of course, is something that we would suggest for you as well. If you're questioning, like, why is this happening to me? Like, you have somebody checking all the boxes, but yet they're insulin resistant or stressed out of their mind. They cannot lose weight. Everything else seems to be in line there could be that trauma that they're just not addressing properly. And we encourage you guys to definitely seek help and see somebody for that for sure. Right. And one of the benefits about social media is you can get into groups. So if you don't have the, the, the financials to see someone or if your insurance won't cover it, if you don't have insurance, you can get with these groups that you, it just helps to talk to someone. And it also helps to talk to with like-minded people mm -hmm. helps bring things down. So Always reach out to all the sources that are there to help you. Um, let me take it away. So some other things that we don't think about that stress affects, obviously our brain, um, our memory, anxiety, depression, all of that's affected by stress. It increases inflammation. Um, it also affects digestion. So a lot goes on with our gut and stress. So you think that whole thing like butterflies, right? If you feel like, oh, uh, you lose your appetite when you get stressed. I mean, this is all what it does to our digestive system, but it also prevents us from absorbing all the nutrients from food. So um, unfortunately, unfortunately, more of our food will just pass right through us without our body taking in what it needs from that food. Big unfortunate thing. So now we become nutrient depleted in many vitamins and minerals. And then it's a cascade of events that just go downhill from there because now we're stressed and also we're depleted of nutrients. Okay. So lots of things happen. Um, your reproductive system. Oh, I, I can't get pregnant. Well, you know, you, you should start to address those things. Maybe another thing for um, a female, my menstrual cycle has been changing. A lot of times that has to do with stress. Um, something thyroid disorders are a big one that I want to just oh, throw sure. in there before you lose track because of thyroid hypo or hyper. Yeah. And, um, but yeah. And just so y'all know with, with, hyper cortisolemia that can be tested. I mean, you can get your numbers checked. It's not easy to do a home test or anything like that, but you can get your numbers checked. Yes. Super important. Yeah. Um, another thing while we're on kind of reproductive system and not like erectile dysfunction, a lot of times stress affects that. So we start reaching for things that might help with erectile dysfunction, but then you think what, why is this not happening? That's why they say like vacation sex. I mean, typically it happens more frequently because we're relaxed. We're not stressed out. So you just have to really, again, going back to finding the root cause of like, what is going on in my body? Why is it not functioning properly? 
Um, what else do I have here? Obviously, heart attack and stroke. We know that increases them because blood pressure goes up. Um, and not to mention, just stress speeds up the aging process. So mm. we're all trying to age backwards, right? Or just slow everything down with the aging process. But the stress brings that up pretty high. Um, okay, so what can we do? Uh, yeah, I would think of it like let's. there's a whole bunch of stuff. So let's just throw it out there and then we'll try to like just kind of pin down a few really, really effective ways. So for me, anyway, you would schedule it like you would the gym or you would schedule it the same way that you're going to put time into going to the grocery store to meal prep and cook healthy food for yourself. You schedule some mindfulness activity every single day for 10, 15, 20 minutes a day. Something like that. It could be a gratitude journal. It could even just be saying, you know what, I was really stressed about this yesterday write it down and check back on that in say three months and say, was that stress response legitimate? Was it, was it how I should have reacted and some things like that. Then you can really kind of dig into being reactive uh, versus responding to, to, to certain stressors in your life. Right. And what, not just like with a gratitude journal, obviously that's highlighting the things that You're we are grateful for, we're grateful for yeah, but yeah. it's also very true when you write down things like I, I'm my mind is going crazy. I'm got this, 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 I'm stressed about this, everything. You write it all down. Then when you look at it on paper, sometimes it looks silly. You're like, wait a minute. Right. Am I, why, why am I like a stressed out maniac because of that? Yeah. So it does help. It does help to write things down, talk to yourself, do whatever, whatever and, else. And then in that 10 or 15 or 20 minutes planned every day, there should like meditative breathing exercises or a lot of apps. I mean, you've talked about some in the past. Um, definitely some of those practices, those should be your first line, like right away. Like, those should absolutely be part of your daily practice. And then we can now talk about like all the other stuff. Right. And with the breathing, I always just, there's so many different breathing methods, but a very easy one to remember. And I've said this on multiple Zooms is your box breathing yep. where you inhale for four, hold for four, exhale for four, hold for four. And just kind of repeat that cycle, lengthen it. It slows you down. It's a really easy one to always remember and go to. And it doesn't make you feel like you like you're holding your breath so much that you can't breathe. Um, what are some other things? Obviously, uh, well, you go. I would just say sleep. Okay, so that this comes to be like that vicious cycle. I'm stressed sure. out, so I can't sleep. But then because I can't sleep, my body's more stressed out. So you've got to really work on and put all the attention into that sleep. We do have a really good sleep um, Zoom out there sure. on our channel. So well, check that out. Lisa does because she struggles with sleep. And I know it, it requires input. Like you have to put the time into sleep. Can't just show up, drop it, drop on the bed. Say, All right, I'm going to get some sleep. You really do need to plan for it. So tune into the sleep video too. That would be helpful information. One thing I want to mention too uh, is mindset and attitude. Of course, you know you'll talk about things, but above, above all, do no harm. Uh, there was a quote that stuck with me. It was like, "Interest <clears throat> uh, worry." So when people worry, worry is the interest paid by those who borrow trouble. So if you're doing things that are wrong or doing things that are you know ethically questionable, then yeah, you might worry a lot, and that also will drive stress. There was another quote that said something to the effect of like the softest pillow is a clear conscience and, and having that clear conscience is a way for you to just continue to do no harm. Be nice to thy neighbor, you know, love one another. It, it, to, to me, just that simple, like always going through your life that way will, will also help you to always to not have that regret and to have that negative. Sure. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Um, diet. Diet. Yeah, nutritional, of course. Nutrition, yeah. You know the way you feel. When yep. you go eat a meal out yep. versus a home-cooked meal, it has such um, a different effect on your body, not just to mention your blood sugar. So part of, like, the stress and cortisol response is, like, these blood sugar spikes that we do when we're eating junk food. So do the best you can. Cook at home. Meal prep. Um, if you need to eat out, make sure you do your research and know – the proper places to eat. So you're not loading your body with, with junk, um, exercise. It is such a stress reliever. And it, it, I know I love exercise. So you might be thinking, well, yeah, you love doing it. But once you, if you don't like to exercise, it takes a little bit more to get into it, but give yourself three months of like going on a daily walk and you'll start to really crave that feeling. Those, that those endorphins increase and you just feel good. So you start to think, Oh, I'm so stressed out. You know what? I'm going to go on a walk. It is such a great way to do it, especially outside, because that's another thing, getting outside, sure? fresh air, sunlight, nature, huge on the stress response. Yeah, I think nature immersion is one of the biggest, even throwing a bird feeder out, letting birds come in, like just simple, simple things, getting an app, looking up new species of the birds, the trees, the plants, whatever that might be, for sure. Right. For sure. And smells too, different smells that come with nature. 
And that's another reason why essential oils can show some benefit too. Yes, coming soon. Coming soon. <laughs> coming soon. Um, another one is pets. Mm -hmm. You, ha If you don't have a pet, pets can bring so much um, yeah. happiness into your life. And even though at times it may be a little bit stressful, <laughs> a lot of extra work, they do really work on um, de-stressing yourself. I, I just have an example with myself. I remember this when one of our dogs was just a puppy, maybe, you know, few, uh, I don't know, five months old, and I was losing my mind. The house was stressful. The kids were going crazy. And then he just did this one silly, like, turnaround move on the couch to, like, be playful with me as I was feeling really stressed out and it completely took it all away. And I just started laughing and it's just one of those things, laughing, yeah, laughing is key. Sure, so so sure. pets really, really, really do help with that. Um, so there's some other things, specialized things like cold immersion therapy. If you guys can do cold plunges or a cold shower, cold shower, there you go. Right. You have a pool and it's getting colder out now. Jump in there a couple, at least once a day or like on the other side, sauna, sauna is another one. Absolutely been shown to be beneficial. Um, um, what do you have? Just avoiding avoiding the drugs and the alcohol that kind of goes along with too avoiding the inflammatory foods. Just anything that's going to make us um, a situation worse. Of course. Um, and then of course supplements. Su supplements are a big player in helping to reduce the stress response. So we have pulled out um, our live good supplements that do have ingredients in them that are known to help with stress. So I'm just going to kind of run through uh, what it is here. So first with our super greens with the ashwagandha. Oh in yeah, it. big time. Huge player in- um, It's an adaptogen. Yes. So it can help you adapt to physiological or psychological stress. It, it, three centuries, guys, three centuries. I mean, it's been used in Ayurvedic medicine in India, seriously, for three millennia. So, our, and this is a KFM 66. For you guys who are curious, you can actually Google that and you'll see exactly what, uh, how it's sourced and um, all, everything about ashwagandha. Okay. Yep. Definitely. And then awesome. in our sleep patches, there are several ingredients that do help with the stress response. I mean, melatonin, GABA, L theanine, valerian root, chamomile flower, lavender oil. Again, coming soon. It's interesting about mel or magnesium. People don't realize, that, well, they hear it a lot now, but like over 300 biochemical reactions involved in the stress response sleep. It's mostly because of the way that it interacts with the GABA. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the GABA receptor which is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. So it can help with the calming down and the sleep response. Right. And then as you picked up the magnesium, um, I just did a post on this. So is that magnesium and stress is a vicious cycle, right? Because uh, a depletion in ma depletion of magnesium increases stress, right? Okay. But stress increase in stress also depletes Deplete magnesium. magnesium. So it's like yeah. this vicious cycle. Especially the specifically the, um, the acute bouts, like those acute flares, like the, you know what I mean? Like the anxiety type stuff. Um, they actually say the studies have shown that it's better to have like one, like say hour long bout of stress versus like 15, you know, five minute sessions throughout the week or something like that. If that makes any sense. Right. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. And then also are the B vitamins in the multi. They're a big player in keeping the stress response down. Um, omegas, which are in the factor four and vitamin D. It, inflammation Just, is a big player. Yep. Yeah, in this whole process too. And it deficient mean, it shows a deficiency in vitamin D is shown to um, increase. Stress. A lot of times too, because the stress response is inhibiting some of the, the immune response, all tied back to the inflammatory um, chemicals, inflammatory mediators that are released in the blood. So there's a whole cascade of events. And that's why I keep going back to the hormone thing, because there's so many things going on there. I should have amino acids and protein out here because the way that I view protein and amino acids as the precursors um, to neurotransmitters and to hormones, you know, they're, they're what's responsible for really building up the serotonin and the dopamine, which by the way is synthesized in the gut. Most of our, most of our neurotransmitters are synth synthesized in our gut lining. So important to make sure that our, our, our brain, uh, mind gut balance is in check. Right, right? for sure. Um, and then, of, well, then of course, the CBD oil. CBD oil, you know, works on our endocannabinoid systems. Super yeah. great for anxiety, stress, sleep. Oh, gosh. But if you're ever feeling like you just can't breathe, your stress <laughs> level is high, just take some CBD oil. I promise you, it really, really, really helps. Um, let's oh, talk someone, about yeah, someone here said reframe exercise. Love that. Love the reframe. That's that mindset. You shift your mindset. There's a lot of examples online about reframing and how to do it and things that, you know, if somebody just got a job promotion or a pay increase and somehow you heard about it, but yet you're still one of the leaders in the industry and you're griping on your reframe and say, actually, I'm a leader. I, 
if I can do better, I'm going to do better. And that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to start being better. I'm going to be the best version of myself. So not focusing on the negative of somebody else, but shifting it into how, how you can become a better version. Right. And I love the reframing. Yes. And he also he was saying reframing exercise. So you're not thinking of it as like, I'm going to exercise, but like, I'm going to go take a Zumba class. Who cares know. if you know how, know how to dance, but you right, know what's right. going to... If you don't know how to dance, this is why I always think about Zumba is I end up laughing more, but then you're moving and you're laughing and you're not stressed out when you're doing that. So you do really have to just reframe something and find something that works for you. Uh, no, no, nothing really else, Lise. I mean, that pretty much covers it. I, I really appreciate everybody. Do one to others. Man, this one's good. I like your, the Punisher. He's a couple of good comments. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I agree. Do one to others. Uh, love God and love thy neighbor. Yeah, so take home message for today, guys. Just recognize your stress. Okay, don't put it on the back burner. You have to focus on it. You have to do what works for you. We just gave you several tips. Um, take something out of that that works for you. And right here, you have our Live Good supplements that can help you with your stress level. And the most important thing is, again, find what works for you and keep that stress level down. Keep it where even keeled, homeostasis balanced where it needs to be. Yes, that's that's about it. I mean, I made a few notes, but it was just, you know, whatever. I mean, we're we're open to things that you guys have too. We'll uh, we'll put some show notes on it for our YouTube. And I think that's it. Lisa, do you have anything else? No, that's it. All right, guys.